common question that comes up for those starting out with welding is what am I supposed to look for? When you have your stable arc profile, you need to watch how that puddle is filling into the parent material. You notice as the torch is being dragged, there's a certain flutter or vibration that the puddle is making as it's tying into the parent material. That's what you want to watch for. Just watch how it wets into the parent material. So the lap joint is probably an ideal place to start when it comes to figuring out your weld settings. Uh, it's really easy to do this kind of setup. You just take some flat stock, arrange it in a stair-like orientation, and then weld the inside corner. The nice thing is, is that you can use the top edge of the material as a sort of yardstick or a way to measure uh, how fast or how slow the puddle needs to be dragged or how fast or slow the torch needs to be dragged rather. Um, again, if you notice that the top edge of the material is melting away, you could say, well, I'm probably dragging that torch too slow or maybe the wire feed speed is going in a little bit too fast. But either way, you know, you can make an informed decision on, you know, adjust your weld settings from there. So in this video example before you, I'm just welding a couple of 3 8 plates. I'm welding a couple of plates that are 3 8 thick, if I could rephrase that. Um, but essentially, without even studying how the torch is being dragged, when you're starting out, you always want to create a stable arc profile or some kind of equilibrium between your wire feed speed and the bolts. Now the settings before you are settings that I like to use. Um, they may not be a fit for you. They may be a fit for you, but you know, welding is really personal. So you may run into different opinions from different welders because everyone has their own personal touch or feel that they apply to their skill set. So you have to understand as well that the wire feed speed and bolt settings before you are also nominal in nature. If you try to apply settings such as those on a rectifier or on a Miller machine or an ESOB, you're probably going to find slightly different arc characteristics. And that's the point. I mean, like, again, when you listen to that arc or the infill, it's consistent, it's steady, and that's really what you want. So despite having different settings, just listen for that sound, and that's going to be half the battle. Now, on another hand, the travel speed is also going to dictate your weld profile. And that's something you want to be conscientious about. In the first example, I have the torch dragging a little bit too slowly. And you'll notice how the top edge of the lap joint is being melted through due to the increased dwell time of heat um, you know, from the slower travel speed. Now a slower travel speed could always be justified by having a slower infill of wire, like the wire feed speed could be at 300 inches per minute and your volt setting could be at 25.8 for example. But you always want to justify increasing the rate of travel based on how much wire is going into the weld zone. And it's also going to be justified by the material thickness. I mean if you're going to be welding 1 8 or thinner material, I probably would recommend not using flux core arc welding, but rather going onto a solid wire with short circuit transfer. Just because the arc itself is a little bit cooler relative to the arc temperature produced by flux core. Um, so just understand that there's always a relationship between the heat input of you know wire feed speed, which is going to determine your amperage, but there's always an application for the material thickness and, you know, proceeding in that direction. So notice in the latter part of the video, the torch is being dragged a lot faster and then you get a smaller weld profile being deposited. And that might have an application for thinner material in the sense that you don't want to be um, melting through the material. But when it comes to thicker material, the risk of depositing a smaller weld is that you may end up with a uh, opportunity for that weld to crack in the sense that you'll have too much of a temperature drop and too much uh, contracting forces 
that the weld itself may fail. So just keeping in mind, um, there's always a relationship between the amount of heat input you put into a material, um, and then you know that's going to be related to the amount of dwell time um, of heat in that material. One final comment. Um, I don't really oscillate the arc when it comes to flux core welding as I find that the heat generated by the arc is hot enough to justify the lack of oscillation. Uh, you may choose that action if you wish, but you have to understand that in doing so you're extending the dwell time of heat within the material or within that section of material. So always think about the application of welding, right? You always have the wire feed speed and voltage set up relative to the kind of wire you're using, relative to the material and material thickness that you're welding. That's really the gist of it all. So just to comment a little bit further on the application, uh, the lap joint example shown in the previous videos would be applicable to welding an angle clip on your column. Uh, this would behave as a column to beam connection. Now the piece of angle is actually 3 8 thick, so if you're trying to create a quarter inch fillet weld, which is typical practice for structural welding, you're once again going back to how that puddle is tying into the parent material, and you're just trying to maintain that 1 8 gap between the weld puddle and that upper edge of the material. So to comment a little bit further on heat input relative to material thickness, uh, in this example I'm welding a piece of pipe onto some half inch plate. And an application for this would be welding your vertical pipe for handrail onto a half inch thick base plate. And the way I approach it is still with flux core because I find that if you're going to be welding 1 8 thick material onto half inch thick material, uh, solid wire probably isn't going to cut it. Even with oscillating the arc and increasing the amount of heat going into the material, I have found in the past that you're not really going to create as much penetration into the half inch plate as opposed to using flux core. So it's probably worth mentioning as well that I dialed down the weld settings to bring the temperature of the arc down because of course you don't want to burn through the wall of the pipe being that it's 1 8 thick. Um, another technique you could also employ is directing that arc itself a little bit more into the half inch base plate rather than the pipe or you can allow a bit of that puddle to sort of push itself into the pipe but you're really trying to focus more of that heat energy into the base plate rather than the pipe. Again, this really comes down to the application of heat relative to the material thickness. Some five by five tubing by three eighths thick. Also some 5x5 five five tubing by 3 8 thick. And then we pair it together like so. And we have a flare groove joint. So how do you weld it? So another scenario we can talk about for reading the puddle would be the flare groove joint. It's all the same really. I mean, when you're welding, you're essentially trying to watch for how that uh, puddle is tying itself into the parent material. The challenge with the flare groove weld is that usually there's a bit of a gap that exists between the two mating surfaces and that's because of the rounded edge uh, that's built into the hollow structural profile. Um, and ideally you want to have a backing plate in place for the mating surface, um, but sometimes you're not going to be given a backing plate, instead you're going to be faced with a gap. So in this case, I ended up turning the wire feed speed and voltage down to create a cooler arc. And you may notice that the arc is actually being pointed a little more to the left side of the joint rather than to the gap. And this is allowing more of the heat energy being absorbed into the um, thicker side of the joint rather than that gap. Because again, if you're going to be pointing more of that arc energy into the gap. There isn't very much material there 
to accept the heat and you're more likely going to experience melt through. Now it's worth mentioning that I only turned down my water feed speed and volt settings for my root pass because I, again I wanted to control the amount of heat input uh, to minimize the risk of burning through the flare groove. But when it comes down to your hot pass, then yes, you can justify increasing wire feed speed and volts to increase penetration. Because again, you have that extra material in place to accept the extra heat. So if you made it this far in the video, I'm hoping that the content shared has been helpful for your own learning. Ultimately, I just really wanted to emphasize the importance of creating an ideal uh, arc profile or heat setting relative to the material that you're welding and to understand the importance of how the puddle is actually wetting into the parent material. Uh, I realize I've been probably rambling a little bit in the video but if you do have any kind of questions on things I could have missed uh, please let me know I'll be happy to help but for now I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.